first and foremost, an opening remark by uh, Baroness Jonas Shields. Thank you. I was just thinking about last year at this time when we were all virtual for the first um, multi-stakeholder experts plenary. And it's just an absolute thrill to be with you guys here today. I think Paris brings us together at a time of you know, profound technological acceleration. And I feel completely invigorated by the conversations that I've had here. And I hope you all share that experience and that it's been a fruitful couple of days for you. We are, we've come a long way, it's only been a year, but the challenges are enormous, but the opportunities are also. GPAY represents a union of thinkers, scientists, researchers, and I think what's magical about all that is that we've all come together here to define a collective future where AI can be deployed ethically, responsibly, and for the benefit of all. We often speak about artificial intelligence outside of this community as something that's happening in the future, but it's very clear that that future is here now um, based on all the presentations that we've had and the experiences that we all have in our, in our daily lives. Um, AI is rapidly integrating in to every facet of our human life. And we've seen astonishing breakthroughs. We've seen them in biology, in the field that I'm working in, medicine, robotics, astrophysics. But right now, this moment in time, is when we have to think about, should we just go with the change and let it experience it, you know, as, as you know, just passerbys? Or do we want to be, you know, controlling it and driving it and charting our own future? As we've seen throughout history, whenever life-changing technologies come around, there's a potential for abuse. I remember in the utopian days of the early internet, the social networks were this utopian idea that we were going to all communicate and understand each other better. Unfortunately, these spaces that were designed to share and experience, communicate with each other, have come to define the fabric of society in a negative way. With AI, we're at a similar watershed moment. Whilst it is driving world-changing innovation, we also see it being used to undermine core democratic principles of freedom, human rights, and equality. We've seen authoritarian regimes and profit-driven companies leverage AI to consolidate their power, build unprecedented surveillance systems to control, monitor, and influence people. We also see AI as a powerful vector to spread disinformation online and sow the seeds of discord in our society. And perhaps most concerning are the AI models that are adopting humanity's worst traits, amplifying historical inequalities and prejudices. If we don't address this now, we may be laying the foundations for a world where AI is concentrated in the hands of elites, with the rest of us forced to live at the mercy of algorithms. As we meet here today, let us acknowledge the gravity of the moment. Let us recognize that as we advance this technology, we need moral leadership and strong convictions on a global level to ensure that AI benefits all in society. The practice of medicine is guided by the Hippocratic Oath, but for AI, there are no guiding principles. Yet without internationally recognized standards, we can't trust that countries and powerful corporations will consider the long-term impacts of the use of AI on people's lives. We've seen outstanding leadership in defining a path toward AI, leadership where GPAY member countries and multi-stakeholder experts, and particularly from President Macron and Prime Minister Trudeau. They had the foresight to recognize the urgent need for global collaboration and establish this organization as part of their G7 presidencies. Today, an increasing number of countries, 60 at last count, have published national strategies calling for a significant investment in AI research and talent to turbocharge economies and advance the technology for the public good. 
However, whilst national governments are waking up to the challenges and opportunities offered by these new technologies, we cannot avoid dealing with the complex interconnected issues inevitably raised by deploying AI in our interconnected world. The key to doing so effectively lies in the strength of international collaboration, which is why we are here today. In a world where technology is ubiquitous and talent and capital, both human and financial, are borderless, we need to organize and act on a multilateral, multi-stakeholder basis. Now is the time to ensure collaboration between governments, the private sector, and civil society. And to make sure that international frameworks on the development and deployment of AI are adopted to ensure a coordinated approach that benefits all. Through this approach, with sovereign nations coming together and choosing to act in concert, we can respond to this major geopolitical challenge. And addressing these challenges requires us to embrace the same levels of global partnership and political action we've seen at COP26 and the G20 in recent weeks. COP26 Climate Summer in Glasgow has reminded us of the vital need for the world community to come together in the shared fight against the climate crisis. I believe the challenge of shaping and regulating a world powered by AI is even more critical. And if these developments have shown us anything, it is that multilateralism remains the best way to tackle shared crises and challenges in the modern world. To that end, we have to reject AI nationalism and transition to a world where AI is treated as a global public good. Nothing positive can come from intensifying rhetoric about an AI arms race. The AI revolution should not be about fighting wars or striving for geopolitical dominance. It must be about building technology that transforms people's lives and creates a world that reflects the best of our human values. Instead of countries making their own way and their own rules, we need to speak as one voice. And that's why the work we are doing at the Global Partnership on AI truly matters. For it is in institutions like ours that sustainable solutions can be found. And if we dial down the competitive language and focus on more inclusive, more equitable policies, we will make the right choices together. But making this shift will not be easy. It requires strong political will and difficult and brave decisions, like sometimes working with nations who may be misusing AI or not considering the long-term impact of the technology on their citizens' rights and freedoms. With the OECD values of human rights, democracy, inclusion, diversity, and sustainability as our compass, we can be the forum in which critical ethical frameworks and a roadmap for the future of AI can be forged. Thanks to your efforts, that work has already begun. Our working groups have embarked on projects with purpose and impact that demonstrate how AI can be directed to serve all in society. Many exciting projects have been undertaken this year that will continue across 2022. But just to mention a few, the Pandemic Response Subgroup created an enabling open environment for the use of AI in drug discovery. The Responsible AI Group took on the challenge of developing a strategy for climate action and biodiversity preservation. The Data Governance Group developed a plan supporting the creation of real-world data trust that enabled data to be shared for social benefit. Now, determining fair and responsible AI practices are deployed and ensuring these practices have a positive impact on the future, on working conditions, was the focus of the Future of Work group. And developing a deeper understanding of the challenges that organizations face in protecting IP as AI becomes mainstream was the focus of our innovation and commercialization group. I want to thank you all for your outstanding work, which has made a huge impact on the success of the Global Partnership in AI's 
inaugural year. But while today is a time to recognize the milestones achieved, it's no time to rest. In the year ahead, we can be bolder in our quest and establish GPAY as the true global convener on these debates. We have made a great start with our international members plus the European Union. But to cement our position, we need to be inclusive and welcome other voices to the table, particularly those from the global south. If AI is to improve lives and reduce inequalities, GPAY must expand its reach to developing countries and others who are not adequately represented in this emerging AI ecosystem. The, if we are to learn the lessons from past failures, the next generations will rightfully ask, how did you miss this? Why did you not act? The fact that we have chosen to be here in Paris today and virtually from all over the world demonstrates our shared commitment and determination to learn from the past and actively navigate a better future together, to rise together to this great challenge of our time. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to my co-chair. Thank you Thank very, you. very much. Please.